Well, the backrest is gone. I cut it where I made those lines with a hacksaw. Unfortunately, the camera didn't record it. St stupid thing. I guess it uh, corrupted those files or something. I think it was shocked at me taking a hacksaw to my brand new kayak seat. But either way, we'll just have to pick up where the camera started recording again, which is me putting the backrest back together. That's a piece of three quarter inch PVC. It wasn't big enough to fit over that aluminum pipe, so I heated it up, slipped it on about three or four inches until it cooled, and it was on there really good. Of course, I added my little paint touches to it. I'm growing fond of this technique. It's fast, easy, looks pretty cool when you're done. There it is there. I was able to bolt it back on, just like nothing had happened. <laughs> Slip the uh, fabric back over the top of it and bolted it on. Now I just had to sit in it and test it out. Okay, well, when I sit uh, down in the seat now, the backrest doesn't dig into my back anymore. So I think extending the backrest has really helped with that. Uh, one of the snags though is that if you see the uh, strap that prevents the backrest from going too far or you know the one that adjusts the height or the position of the backrest, this strap is now too short. So I knew I was going to have to do some sewing of straps anyways because you got the buckles on the bottom of the uh, backrest material here and I have to add straps to it so we can tie this down. When I sew those together I'll take this strap and cut it and make it a little bit longer to make it functional again. But uh, all in all I think I'm really close. So let's get the sewing machine out. Here's an old sewing machine that I've used a lot in the past. It was given to me after I described how I once made a Halloween costume by hand. And uh, I talked sewing with this uh, woman for a while and she says, you know, I happen to have an extra sewing machine. She was a neighbor I had when I first moved to Florida. Very, very nice lady. But anyways, uh, she taught me how to thread the bobbin and do all the little fancy things you need to know how to do in order to run these things. And uh, I'm pretty grateful for it because they really do come in handy. And here you see I'm uh, cutting the straps off of the fabric and repositioning them here onto the bottom of the back of the seat fabric. And uh, when I'm actually turning the machine by hand because it's so thick I didn't want to break the needle. This is it sped up. Again, I'm using my hand to, to turn it. Uh, it's a lot slower, but still faster than having to do this with a needle and thread. Here I'm just trimming off the extra, and uh, that's about it. It's very fast, sewing these pieces of fabric on there. So while I still had the sewing machine out, I figured I'd extend these uh, straps here. Essentially the old ones just had a, an end of it folded like four times and sewed together. And through those four layers a hole was burnt. You can see it there. It looks like they used a hot punch or something. So I'm just going to use a propane torch and a roofing nail that I'm holding with a pair of pliers. Should work real fine. I 
now we have a longer strap that has to be sewed on to the buckle and the position of the stitches is going to be so close to the buckle that I wouldn't be able to do it with the sewing machine. So what I did is I took some thread off of the spool from the uh, sewing machine here and I put it through a conventional needle and I sewed the straps on by hand. If you think this is tedious to watch, just try to imagine how <laughs> tedious it was to actually do and not being sped up or anything like that. <sighs> but that's why I'm thankful for having a sewing machine and for editing. Now it was just time to strap the seat back together. And that is going to hold the chair down. Whew. Well that just about does it. The functional aspect of this chair is now done. And there's a couple other aesthetic things I could probably do, like reupholster the seat. But quite honest, I'm a little bit tired right now. So I'm going to call it a day. And in future videos, some of the things that I'm going to add to this kayak, aside from anything else to the seat, would be simple stuff, like a cooler and a anchor trolley. And of course the pontoons to add stability for the addition of the height in the seat. I think it's going to be an interesting build, the rest of it as well, including the pontoons. That ought to be a really cool episode. And as usual, thank you guys for coming along. And if you like this type of stuff, share this with friends and tell them about this crazy guy you saw on YouTube. Because nowadays this is how I make a living. And all of your support really, really does help. And that means watching my videos and commenting and liking and sharing and all that good stuff. So, until we meet again, thanks for coming along on another DIY adventure. Hopefully, I'll see you out on the water soon. Thanks for watching. That feels pretty good, actually. Hmm. I like it. Well guys, I want to give a comparison between the seat that I built and the standard seat that comes with this Pelican Catch 120. And I can see immediately standing in front of these two that the one that I built is a lot easier to get into than to just sit down on that thing. But we'll give it a shot. And you can see I can sit down without my arms and get back up fairly easily. With this seat here, <coughs> yeah, it's, it's really low. And there is a, a very noticeable difference between this seat, the standard seat, and the one that I built. Not to mention not having armrests, because without putting my hands on the floor, there's no way I'd be able to get up. <sighs> so, I'm hoping that this doesn't make it too difficult to paddle. One thing's for sure, it's going to make it easier to get up from a low seated position. <laughs>